Alec, tell me, uh, tell me about how the combination of both DX NetOps and AppNeta can help solve uh, that use case scenario about the call center. So if the IT department at the call center said, listen, it seems like we're having internet is issues, but I don't have any visibility into the ISP, so you're just gonna have to tell your customer to try back later. How, how, how do we solve that use case? Yeah, so, you know, combining the two solutions and without dropping too much in, you know, how we're going to deploy and, and all those different connections, I think the way that we're going to look at performance going forward is trying to isolate the scope as quickly as possible, isolating the domains in which uh, performance can derade and, and figure out which ones we actually have control over. And so one of the ones that we've seen recently is you have basically the, the user environment. So if that's a call center, if that's home, if that's wireless or wired, you know, there's there's a bunch of different things that we can look at the user environment. And then you have last mile ISPs basically right outside their door. What, who are they contracting with and are they performing up to whatever standard they need to? Then you've got transit networks, you've got everything between that last mile ISP and wherever the app is hosted. And that can be an app hosting environment, that can obviously be cloud, that can be data center, that could be a headquarters. Uh, and so isolating those domains as quickly as possible really helps IT first isolate, okay, we know it is not an application issue, we know it's a network issue, and we now have isolated to at least who is the problem. Now, I'm gonna be the first one to tell you, you're not always gonna get the ISP to say, oh, yes, we've seen the problem, now we can fix it. But isolating to that uh, is really gets to a point that we've hammered home over the past couple of years that we've heard from customers is mean time to innocence, right? It allows the IT to say, this is not our fault. This is not our problem. We can help you prove where the problem is and we can give you the data, but we at least know that this is not something that's going to fall on our desk um, because we can't actually solve this issue. And I think that allows them to make the business case of saying, hey, we either need better control about that Right, we can go to SD WAN sassy conversation, or we need some recourse to say that like this is your next step for troubleshooting and triage. And you mentioned, uh, you know, you may not be able to fix the ISP's issue, and you mentioned mean time to innocence, but without that visibility into um, the ISP's network performance or even cloud network performance, I imagine, you know network operations teams would spend a, a heck of a lot more time in the weeds trying to figure out where the problem is. Um, so with this type of visibility, I can only imagine it's proving, improving mean time to, to troubleshooting, mean time to repair, um, mean time to isolation, whatever mean time you want to bring up, because uh, this visibility just must increase that type of troubleshooting time and reduce it from hours down to even minutes. Well, and, and I think the the general rule in IT has always been you have to be careful about what's going to be thrown on your desk versus other people's desks. So like isolating like where where your sphere of influence ends, uh, really just understanding that having visibility into that is is key to kind of having these conversations moving forward. I mean, we're, we're not going to avoid war rooms all the time, but if we can shorten those meetings to, you know, five, 10 minutes and say, here's here's where the problem is and oh, yeah. three hours of finger pointing, like that's going to save time for everyone involved. That's awesome. Um, I know another example, and I can say I personally experienced it, is uh, uh, the SaaS user experience, right? Um, and the highway to the SaaS experience, which obviously is ISP and cloud providers. But I can tell you personally, on December 7th, uh, when we were so excited to announce the news of the intent of the acquisition, uh, my team personally had all these to do's that we had to do and check mark and pull the trigger, locked and load it. And one of those to do's for me was to log into an application called Everyone Social and get the word out, right? Uh, that this was happening and we're so excited. And for those folks who don't know what Everyone Social is, it's kind of like a platform for social media to push out to multiple social media channels at once. Uh, I tried to log into it and just spun, right? We know that spinning type of uh, uh, wheel that we see sometimes when things aren't working. I had no idea actually that the app was in the cloud, in AWS. But nowadays, I didn't even think to care where the app lived. I thought actually my company hosted it, but go figure, I found out uh, it was hosted in AWS. So immediately my job stopped 
because I couldn't get access to this, this SaaS application in this AWS environment. Now, luckily, I went on to other parts of my to-do list and, and just went back to the app about an hour later, and it was up. Um, and lo and behold, we heard on the news that AWS had an outage. Now, long story short, um, if I would have called my IT department and said at Broadcom and said, listen, why isn't everyone social working? Um, with the combination of both products, tell our users how we would have been able to resolve that so quickly. Yeah, I mean, the the first thing you'd, they'd be able to say is that there's no network problem here. This is an application problem. This is in the application provider. This is in the cloud environment. And I, I think what's funny is that that same issue, that same day, obviously hit us and it hit uh, our ability to push a PR. So we couldn't put a press release live. So that got mm -hmm. delayed, you know, and it got mm -hmm. delayed, you know, 30 minutes, 45 minutes. But I think what, what you hit on there, which is really interesting, is that application outages are, are at this point news, right? Like apps don't actually go down that often, right? They're they're often up. And especially when you talk about uh, the idea of kind of like database replication and the ability to kind of access apps wherever you are in the world with low latency, like these are replicated apps. So the fact that they go down is actually a huge, huge event. And I think what that brought us to know in AppMeta is that when you, when you go to that high overarching question of when there's an issue, is it app or network? It's less of the app today, especially when you're dealing with large SaaS type solutions, right? Things that, you know, we use every day, Office 365, Okta, Salesforce, all of those things. Like those don't go down, but every single one of our networks has trouble getting to them at some point during the day, right? And there's so many different pieces of the puzzle that are on the network side. And that's why I'm so excited about bringing kind of AppNeta, DXNetOps, and some of the other Broadcom solutions around security that we can kind of start telling that story and give even more data on where in the networks the problem exists. Real quickly, um, can you tell our audience the, the power of the combination of the solution when it comes to helping our network operations teams triage from end to end. So what I'm trying to get to here is how would the Broadcom IT team help me understand that the um, the degradation or the application outage I was experiencing was actually not isolated to my home network. And it wasn't yeah. me that was actually having the problem. Yeah, so the, one of the ways that we deploy, especially for a remote uh, type of employee, we're, we're going to use Windows or Mac agents, essentially we call them monitoring points, and put that on your laptop. And because Everyone Social is a business critical app for you, we're going to have a network path that's targeted out to Everyone Social. And it's going to be at kind of a low overhead level monitoring that all day. Uh, and what's nice about that is that if your computer is on, uh, it's going to be monitoring that even when you're not using it. And so we can start alerting if, you know, different metrics actually trigger any alert thresholds, we can actually uh, alert on that. But the idea is that we're sending traffic out over the network to experience the application all the time, continuously. And so that when things occur, the first thing our monitoring is going to do is basically escalate and try to confirm that this is not a network blip, it's not a route change, it's not uh, a small outage where you're switching between a couple different servers. Uh, we're going to try to figure out if it's a real issue, if it persists, and then we're going to do more monitoring. Uh, and so what the IT team can do is they can look through DXNetOps, find out everything about your device, right? Everything about the connection if you're going through VPN uh, or any type of security solution. We can look at the uh, configurations, policy changes, if there's anything that affected that. Uh, we can look at every step of the way um, by looking at through the tunnel, right? Actually going through it as if you were. And then we can look at all the devices in the chain that we own and start to exonerate each one as we go along the way. And so I think what's really interesting going forward is as we unify these solutions into one uh, kind of like solution set where we can look at this all the way across the line, they can have a dashboard for Jeremy that says, okay, these are his business critical apps, right? I can look at that list and say, these are the three that are down. Oh, that's interesting. There are three that are down. And if I do a quick Google search, I can figure out they're all hosted in AWS. That's interesting. Let me take a look, a, a deeper look at that. Let me look at outage reports. Um, maybe use some global monitoring to figure out uh, if anything else from his area of the world, his region, 
having the same issue. Oh, yes, it is. Oh, interesting. US East 1 seems to be down, right? We can start making those conclusions a lot easier. And what we're getting to is the point where that's going to all be brought to IT's attention, maybe before you're even really impacted, before you even see it. Maybe you're just looking at your Gmail, you're, you're typing something up, and you know a few minutes go by, and they've already been alerted to what the problem is, and they can start looking at it. So, yeah, it might not stop you from opening a ticket, but they're immediately going to know what the issue is and be able to respond, which helps their credibility. It makes you feel like they're on top of it. And, you know, if they can solve the issue, they're already working on it by the time you actually even realize it's happening. Wait, so you're telling me that my IT team can create a dashboard just for Jeremy and all the work that I do? Uh, I'm going to ask them and see if they'll do that for me because <laughs> I'm that important. Um, <laughs> Real quick, because um, we're talking about this end-to-end -end visibility now of the end user experience as it relates to network delivery. So um, to be able to understand and replicate my end user experience, maybe out to everyone social in AWS, from my home wireless network over the many ISPs I may hop to and then into, into the AWS network, I know there's something from AppNeta called active testing, which allows you to replicate the end user experience and say, I see what you see. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, so you know, our active testing on the network side is a proprietary technology called TruePath. Uh, it essentially uses some uh, testing methodologies like packet train dispersion, and uh, we can mimic things like audio codecs if we wanna test like data traffic versus voice traffic. Um, but that's basically sending low overhead traffic out every minute. Uh, and that's targeting every business critical app that you care about. Obviously you can mix and match uh, what you're targeting versus what I'm targeting, right? If my business critical apps are different than yours, then we can have a different profile for me for different users in my department um, versus yours. Now, in this case, we're in the same department, but uh, if you wanna get a developer's focus, then you can look at GitHub, you can look at uh, some of the different tools that they use versus what we're using. Uh, in marketing versus what people are using in sales. Uh, and so we're using that low overhead testing to essentially continually monitor some of the key network metrics that you'd expect, things like loss, latency, jitter, RTT, and, and most importantly, capacity, um, because we found that's one of the leading indicators of uh, whether or not you're actually gonna have performance. And, and one of the easiest things to look at and say, hey, you know, you're paying for you know, maybe you know, 60 megabits uh, down and you're getting four up. Right, you can't run your WebEx while Netflix is running in the other room while you're also having a YouTube in the background, right? Like that's just not going to work. Now, Alec, I thank you so much for your time today, your participation in the NetOps, NetOps Expert. So excited you joined the Broadcom Network Monitoring Solution and Marketing Team. Um, uh, again, thank you for joining us today, and you'll see us next time on the next episode of the NetOps Expert.